Demata, class Asteroidea. We're going to start with the aboral surface with the madreporite plate, then a spine, and a dermal branchia. Here, here we have a pedicellaria, and then we have the anus, rectal cica, pyloric stomach, cardiac stomach, mouth. Oh, it fit me. And we get over here. We're going to do the water vascular system. So here's madreporite plate again. Water comes into the stone canal, around the ring canal, to the radial canal, and then to the lateral canal. Water goes from lateral canals into the ampulla and the tube feet. That's an eye spot, just in case you wanted to know. Here's the gonads. Oh, so many gonads. Here's pyloric cica. This is the ambulacral ridge. This is the ring nerve or nerve ring, and this is a radial nerve. These, uh, all these little egg looking things on the side, those are all ossicles that have been cut. If we flip them over, what, what? We find ourselves with the ambulacral groove. These blue things are tube feet. These are oral spines. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's the mouth. Here we go with the cross section. Here we have an ossicle. No, go ahead, you can do that. Ossicle, 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 ossicle. The gap between the ossicles is dermal branchia, pyloric cica, coelom, ampulla, tube foot, radial nerve, radial canal, lateral canal. Sweet. Here we see more spines. And then if we look, this space here is also the coelom. And that's the end. <laughs>
Exploring a reef in the tropical Pacific, I find a crown of thorn sea star dining on the coral. This thorny armored sea star is one of only a few animals that can digest living coral. It wraps itself around a coral colony and eats the polyps, leaving a dead, bleached coral skeleton behind. Here's a healthy colony of plate coral. And here's one that's been eaten by a crown of thorns. Outbreaks of these sea stars have been known to kill entire reefs. Carefully picking one up to avoid the sharp and venomous spines, I can see the stomach which the sea star inverts out of its mouth to digest the coral outside of its body. These sea stars are the second largest in the world, growing bigger than a dinner plate. But if you think these are big, wait until you see the largest sea star in the world. In the cold, murky waters of the Canadian North Pacific, I swim through beautiful gardens of sponges, anemones, and soft coral, searching for a giant sun star. And then, down on the bottom, I find what I'm looking for. It has up to 24 arms, more properly called rays, and reaches three feet across. This is the world's largest sea star. A thousand miles south on a reef in the tropics, I find a blue Linkia sea star on the bottom. Like the vast majority of sea stars, this one has only five rays. With tiny tube feet on its underside, this sea star barely seems to move, but when I speed things up with time-lapse photography, Linkia sea stars appear very active, moving about and grazing the bottom for food. But even more curiously, they're polite, restraining from walking on top of each other. Like bumper cars, when one Linkia touches another, they each go the other direction. It's all very civilized. Sea stars are amazing animals. They might look like they're just sitting there doing nothing, but they survive by hunting for food, and they do that in many ways, from catching it as it floats by, to chasing it down. They're such good predators that sometimes they can destroy entire reefs. It goes to prove that just because something is slow doesn't mean it isn't up to something. You never know where a sea star is going to turn up. <laughs>